Hi guys and welcome to another exciting floristry tutorial. Today we're going to be making a four foot spray but this is going to be different because I've never done a tutorial where I'm, where I'm only using one main flower. So we're going to be using sunflowers as a main flower and then we need some filler in there as well to cover the gaps. So I've got some solidago as well. So I've got 25 stems of solidago, 30 stems of sunflowers and then I do have three packs of leather leaf as well so we can create the spray but more on that later I'll show you what to do. Then for our sundries we have got a double uh, tray here so it can fit two blocks of oasis in there then we've got three blocks of floral foam or oasis we've got some floristry scissors Japanese ones are so much better <laughs> and then some normal scissors or ribbon scissors what whatever you've got and then we've got some waterproof floristry tape or pot tape as well so let's get into making it First of all, we need to fill the sink up high enough so we can fit the three blocks of floral foam in there so they can soak nicely. Okay, so the sink is nicely filled up now and all we have to do, and this is what you need to do to get the best soak, okay? So this is the proper way to do it. You just literally just put them in like this and you just need to leave them do not dunk them okay if you dunk them there's going to get air bubbles in there and your flowers are going to die so you need to leave them like this for at least 90 seconds but whilst i'm soaking those let's go on to pricing the coffin spray is my most common question i get asked on this channel so i thought i'd put a section in here as well so we can understand what's going on now this is a little bit different to the coffin sprays that i usually do which are pre-priced so i know exactly what flowers that are going to go in there to make a profit but because this is a bespoke request it's going to be a little bit different so what i usually do with each flower you buy them from wholesale, work out how much you bought them for, add the VAT on, and then I personally times it by three. But it's completely bespoke to so you can times it by two, four, depending on where you are and where you are on your floristry journey and how you feel comfortable pricing. But I basically work out what my wholesale cost is, put the VAT on, and then times it by three. And that is how I work out how much my flowers and foliage are gonna cost to the customer. So I've worked it out. So my sunflowers are gonna cost me three pound per stem. So with the 30, that's gonna be 90 pounds. Then with the solidago, that is going to be two pounds per stem. Then with the leather leaf, the packets are about five pounds when I've added the VAT on. So then I have to times that all by three because there's three packets. So that's gonna be 45 pounds. Then you've got to remember to not forget your mechanics like your tray, your tape, your scissors, your oasis. So that's going to be £15, which takes us up to 200 So it's going to be £30 time. So the whole spray is going to cost me £230. And then I know that's going to be able to pay um, the wholesalers, the business and pay me as well and my time. OK, so my three bricks are nicely soaked now and they can go into the tray. Okay, so this is when our tray comes into place. So we just need to simply put the soaked floral foam bricks into here. I can never say floral foam, floral foam <laughs> bricks on into here. So I've got two there. And then I'll put another one in the middle for extra stability and water source. So then I'm going to get my waterproof, floristry tape or bot tape, find the end. Then I'm just going to simply bring this, I'll bring it towards you actually so you can see here. So basically we just need to secure it with the tape like this. Sorry if your eyes have got to go down, it's a really awkward angle. I'm going to go around a couple of times so that one's secure. Then I'll go to the middle. And then I put one layer on one side, turn it around, and then another on the other side. Okay, so it's looking like this, so nice and secure. And then I just come to the end again and just put a couple around this end. Okay, so then it's looking like that. Then I'm just gonna get my normal scissors and cut the excess off, and then tape it back onto itself. Okay, <laughs> so your spray is then going to look like this. It's nice and secure, it's not going anywhere. 
okay? So brilliant, that is how I do it. And that's nice and secure, nice and soaked and ready for the foliage base. Okay, so I'll put you on the best angle I can possibly do for you to see this the best way. And if you follow these steps as you're doing your tribute, then you're not gonna go wrong, okay? So I'm gonna tell you everything that you need to know to make this spray. You can fast forward, rewind, ask questions in the comments, and it's gonna be perfect, so don't worry at all. So anyway, I'm gonna start off with my leather leaf. So I'm going to use these as the two main points for the end. So what is actually best to do if you are a beginner, I just know because I make so much of these, what four foot is. So I've got four foot on the tape measure and I hope you can just about see the end is literally the <laughs> end of the camera. <laughs> so you're going to have to bear with a second. So we're going to have to chop our ends down so that the end of the foliage meets the point of the end of the tape measure this side and then the other side as well. So then we know that we have got our four foot spray. And then it doesn't particularly matter the length of what you're going to do with the width wise. Okay, so you've got to keep in mind that you do need a sort of diamond shape. So I'm just going to cut mine down here, put one this side. So then I'm going to make an invisible diamond shape. So from this point has to meet this point here and then the other side as well. Okay, so I'll just pull that a little bit this way so you can sort of see. So that is going to make a diamond shape, like the triangle shape from the middle to the end of the spray. Then do try to match up the same sort of length and put it onto the other side. Now, this is all about symmetry with a spray like this. So you are going to be making triangles and diamond shapes, so it needs to be symmetrical. So whatever you do on this side, you on that side, that side, this side, even the corners, do it the same on the other side, okay? And so on and so forth. So if you just keep that imaginary diamond shape in mind, then you're gonna succeed. So I'm just gonna grab some more leather leaf here. Now, I don't know whether you can see on the camera or not, but you do need to lie your leather leaf flat, okay? So when I say flat, I mean, let me bring this up to you so you can sort of see. Okay, so I'm putting the end of my leather leaf into the base here. So where the tray meets the oasis, you need to lie it flat, not upright. You need to lay it flat like that. Okay, so as you can see, they're all lying flat. They're not going downwards, they're not going upwards, they're lying flat. And you need to do this throughout. Okay, so I'm going to do that all the way around. And when you first start in, this will take you a while. I mean, I've been doing these for eight years, so I am a little bit quicker. But if I say, like, like I said, you can always rewind, pause. Okay, that I'm keeping that diamond shape in mind. I'm keeping the diamond shape in mind, okay? So as you can see, it is now a diamond shape. So from this end, goes to there, goes to there, goes to there, and goes to there. Then all we need to do now is just get smaller pieces of our leather leaf and just layer it on top. So just another layer on top, going shorter, than the layer beneath. So exactly what we did on the first layer, you need to mimic that on the second layer as well. Just above, probably about, let me have a look, probably about half an inch up from your last la layer. And as you can see, I'm doing exactly the same. Now this is the easy bit because you've already got the shape. So you can literally just cut your stems down and then pop them in. Okay, so I'm just going to finish that layer off. Oh, I've got leather leaf in my mouth. <laughs> then we're going to cut them down even shorter for the third layer and then do it exactly the same. Now, because we've got this brick on top, I am going to start putting it in the third brick. 
okay and that's going to cover the surface of your oasis at the bottom as well so just a bit shorter than the other layer it doesn't have to be too much shorter but we're going to try and make a sort of triangle at the top as well so if you go shorter it's going to make a point in the middle okay so then you won't go wrong so just keep layering and getting smaller and when you get to the center you're going to have the perfect shape okay so then we're just going to go around making sure that i can't see any gaps in there as well so i'm just going around with my fourth layer a bit shorter so when you do get to like say so i'm putting them now and they need to be a bit shorter like that you cannot put that into the oasis because the foliage is just going to sort of just not make it get water and yeah it's not going to be secure so you've got to make a naked stem like this so you pull these units off and you've got the naked stem and it's like a needle that can fit through neatly into the oasis okay so you'll probably see me now taking these bits off i know it's green on green so i'm trying to show you <laughs> Okay, now even shorter stems for the fifth layer. Now I know that I'm saying fourth, fifth, third layer, it doesn't really particularly matter as long as the layers are getting shorter to the top. Okay, so now I have got, well, let me just put that there. I've got to my surface bit now. So I'm going to get little pieces, oh, that one's not very nice. I'm gonna get shorter pieces about that length and then i'm going to start layering the surface so again just layering it like we did from the bottom but on a smaller scale okay so still keeping that diamond shape it's, it's like doing a miniature spray on the top of it okay so you still got to think of that diamond shape you're just working in very small units and remember that naked stem pinpoint okay So this is gonna, this is the most fiddly bit. Like I like doing the base more because it's like bigger and there's a lot more foliage on it. It doesn't take as long, but this is a fiddly bit. In floristry, I love anything that's big, anything that's fiddly. I can do it, but it's not my favorite thing to do. My least favorite thing to do in floristry is risk corsages. <laughs> do you know what? I could never ever get like i can't just think oh, i'm gonna make a risk corsage without having to plan it like within an hour of actually doing it <laughs> because it's so dainty and fiddly it's just like just give me the big stuff any day i can do it <laughs> do you have like a least favorite thing to do if if you're just watching this video and you just want to see how i do floristry like do you have anything that you don't like doing that you have to do <laughs> I mean, it's all fun, but there is a few things where florists can be like, oh, that just doesn't come naturally to me, but <laughs> it's going to be done. It's going to be perfect. Okay. So now we've got our centre done. Then what I, what I like to do, I've got a few stems of the leather leaves left now. And I'm just going to go round seeing if I can see gaps. Okay, so then I'm just going to use the excess leather leaf that I've got to fill in the gaps. So this bit you don't have to sort of think, oh, I need to still keep it the same size. It doesn't matter. So you, this is just basically filling in the gaps with foliage. Okay, so I've got a few more stems here. The last of it. And then also you can use these to sort of make the diamond shape more prominent as well. So just put some on the sides here with the longer stems, making that shape really snatched. <laughs> okay, I'm going to put one on here. here 
And then I think I might put just one more on the corner of the end here. Oh, and then I've just got one more. I can see a gap there. Okay, so that is our foliage based four foot coffin spray. Now for the sunflowers. Okay, so these are straight out of the bag. So I do just need to condition these because as you can see, some of the foliage on these are a bit wilted, got a bit brown, but that is normal for sunflowers, so do not panic. Okay, so I'm just going to cut the elastic bands off and then we are going to cut them down and put them into the spray. Okay, so I'm going to probably condition them as I'm going along. So I want to get a sort of bigger headed one for the focal flower that sort of stands up straight. If I can find one. Okay, I'm going to use this one. So this is going to be our main focal flower. So I like to start off with the central focal flower because that's the center. That is where all the other sunflowers are going to come and spring from. Okay. So the length of this, we really want to make it so it's like right into the oasis and got a good water source. So I'm going to cut it to about here. I do want it to sort of stand out so it's higher than the foliage. So it sort of makes a statement piece with the sunflowers as well. So I'm just going to find my middle here and then just put it all the way down. It is sort of going to look a bit not even and in the centre, but don't worry, you can sort of titivate it around and make sure that it's going to be sat in the centre nicely. Okay, then I'll, what I like to do then is make zigzags of the sunflowers coming down to that end and the other end as well. Now, the reason that I do zigzags is if you look at the coffin spray from any single side, you will be able to see the beauty of the flowers from every side that you look at it. So I'm going to put one just below this one here pointing that way so the people looking at the coffin spray can see the full head of the flower that's standing that way because if you put it into the center you will only see the side i know it's a bit extra but it just makes it more visually pleasing as well okay and then i'm going to put a third one down here so as you can see that lovely zigzag then i'm going to put one matching the length of the end of this side of the coffin spray so the peak here of the end so again going in the zigzag and i'm going to line that sunflower up nicely against the end the tip of the diamond okay so as you can see still that zigzag then we're going to do the same but the opposite way okay so i'm going to put one here Then, oh, this one's a bit small, but it's okay. It's still got that yellow colour to it, so it will hint out of the spray. Okay, another one here. And then one here. And then just one at the end as well. So just leaning against like the same sort of similar side to the peak of the spray. Okay, then I like to come down the centre here. Okay, so I'm going to put one here. So just at the top of the corner of the surface. And then one the other side as well, mimicking that. Okay. Just need that focal flower to just stay there. It will, it will come together. Okay, now I need to get my other packs of some flowers. Okie dokie, I'm ready. So then we need to see everything as triangles, okay? So the golden rule of floristry, you've got to create space and create triangles. So that is a really good way to see what placement we can put in. So you're not going to want to put it sort of there because it's going to be all mashed up. We're going to want to have space in them and create a triangle. So wherever you place it, make sure it's a nice sort of symmetrical triangle. Okay, so these three here are a triangle. 
So if you keep thinking like that, you've got the golden rule of floristry and it's gonna be a lot easier for you. So when I was beginning, that really, really helped me knowing that everything, need, your main flowers all need to go in triangles. Filler flowers are different, but we'll come to that in a minute. Okay, so I want to create a triangle here as well. So I'm going to put one down here. So as you can see, these three are creating a triangle. <laughs> Then I'm going to want to put one at the bottom here for the diamond shape. And then because I've got one here, I want to do the same on that side to create a triangle. Okay, so these three are a triangle and those three are a triangle. <laughs> Then we're going to want to do the same on this side so i'm going to go to the corner here and as you can see that's still making a triangle i'm going to put one here Beautiful. And then another one here, triangle. <laughs> Sorry, I will keep continuously saying triangle <laughs> to get it into your head. <laughs> okay, then I'm gonna put one going that side. And I need to create the triangle with that one, so another one needs to go down here. So I'll go around the other side. Okay, so I'll just move the spray like this. So you can sort of see the heads of the sunflowers as I'm doing it. So we'll just put one here and I need to create a triangle. So I'm gonna put one here, okay? triangle here and I'm going to want to put one at the end here one in the middle of the peak of the side so as you can see there's a line coming all the way through here so at the at the end once you made all the triangles you will see that there's lines going everywhere, especially this one, the lines go straight through the middle. And as you can see, with using the golden rule of floristry, how nicely placed are all the sunflowers and they're not just one big clump and it comes really, really easy to you if you use this. It just basically spaces out the flowers for you without even having to, having to think about it. do see any gaps that you haven't put one in put them into the gaps making sure that you're creating a triangle <laughs> i'm gonna watch this back and get so irritated at myself now i can see that there's a gap here so i'm gonna put one here okay and then there's a gap here so i'm gonna put one here Brilliant. I've got one more. Where can I put this one? See if there's any gaps around. <laughs> They're all perfectly placed. Okay. Can you see on the camera if I can see anywhere? What about there? No. See, this is the thing. <laughs> I'm being so like honest about this. <laughs> I can't even find where I should put the last one. It's gonna have to go in because clients pay for it. So, okay, I think I'm gonna put it down here. Oh, yeah. 
yeah, now it's time for our Solidago and it's different from this placement, so I'll show you what to do. Okay, so I've got my Solidago here and then basically what we need to do is, do you know these gaps that we created with our golden rule of floristry? We're going to put these heads of Solidago into them, okay? So we're going to want to cut them down to how, how big the sunflowers are sitting. They can come out a little bit to add a bit of drama in there, but they need to be cut the same size as the leather leaf. So remember how we started bigger at the bottom and came to the top. So when you are filling in the gaps, do make sure you're cutting them down to the same sort of length as what you did, your foliage and your sunflowers as well. Okay, so I'm gonna use a longer stem for the bottom. get the sort of gist okay so there's no rhyme or rhythm to fill the flowers okay you want literally the work's already done for you basically so you don't have to think of the sort of oh we need to do it in this way we need to do it that way the, the work's already done for you if you can see a gap put a filler flower in there <laughs> And I know I do a lot of modern floristry as well, but for my funeral work, I do like it to be traditional. I just think that it's, it's so, so much more classier that everybody's going to like it. It's not to an acquired taste. It's how funeral flowers, in my opinion, are meant to be. So I don't, if I can get away with it, I don't spray anything like in funerals. Everything is just natural. There's no sort of fancy like gold spray things like feathers or anything like that. I just like it to be nice and traditional. I've always done it like that and it's what I sort of like to do. And how nicely distributed are they already without having to make any sort of effort? Okay, so then I'm going to come round my other side and just fill in the gaps this side as well. Okay, then I'm just going to get the rest of my solly. Sorry, I just knocked you. Okay, just covering, covering those gaps. What do you think about some flowers, guys? Do you like them? I don't, I don't know, it's not a flower that I would really go to. I don't put them into any of my like daily arrangements or anything unless they've been sort of specifically asked for. Okay, then I've got one more. I'm going to put it down here. Brilliante! And then it's brought to life with all that yellow loveliness. I do just want to take this time uh, for you to know that I was a beginner once and me doing that, it probably looks super easy for you and I've made it look easy. And it's not. Like when I first started, it took me two hours to make a coffin spray, if not more. Like I used to plan it all the day before and then spend the whole day like thinking about how I'm going to do it and then actually go and do it. Uh, my placement of the flowers, I took them out, put them back in. But now I can just literally put a flower in and I know that it's going to sit well and look good. Okay, so this all comes naturally to me. I've got eight years experience and I know exactly what it's like at the beginning of the journey. So don't feel disheartened if your spray doesn't turn out like this one. Okay, I've tried to explain it as well as I can. So hopefully it will turn out like this one. 
but don't worry if it doesn't. Everybody has their own sort of style. Your work is not gonna look exactly like mine. Your work might look even better than mine. Well, in other people's opinions, like everybody has their own like <laughs> eye for beauty, haven't they? So it doesn't have to look exactly like mine. You can put other flowers in there, other filler flowers in there. It doesn't matter. So I just don't want you to be disheartened. So I know that I'm going off topic here and I want to know that I want you to know that I can relate to where you are in your floristry journey. So basically, I started netball in March. I absolutely love netball. I'm absolutely obsessed. I play it twice a week and I'm just like, why am I still so shit? Okay? And then I've got to remind myself, I've only been doing it for like less than six months. You can't just get onto the court and expect to be an athlete, can you? You can't expect to be in the netball super league. Like, when you begin something, you are gonna be shit. And it's gonna take time. <laughs> You can't, unless you like had sort of like more creative experience before and like have gone to flower classes before, you will have no idea how to do the flowers. So I've tried to explain it as well as I can, okay? And then I've got so many more tutorials. You can comment any questions that you want to ask and just know that this is a safe space for you to come and learn floristry. Oh yeah, and other questions that I get asked most frequently is do you need to keep your uh, flowers cool um how long can i make the spray before it's going out to the funeral i would say don't make it more than two days before i do prefer doing my funeral work two days in advance just in case i don't have enough i can then go and get the extra flowers if i need to it just saves all the stress if you don't have enough time, you can do them the day before. Just make sure that you know how many flowers that you're getting. Because I'm in, I'm in England, I don't have a refrigerator to put my flowers in. But if you do, just put them in the cooler. Um, in other hot uh, states in America or different hot countries, I would probably recommend getting a cooler for your flowers as well. Because I know on the hot days in England, especially when I get roses, the roses just open like within the day and then they don't last as long. So when I get roses in, they have to go out on that day. Otherwise, they're not going to last as long. So yeah, if you are in a hot place, um, I would recommend getting a refrigerator. If not, on, like, on really, really like hot days, um, I do have a portable air conditioning unit uh, that I'll put in just in case for like wedding seasons in the summer i don't want all my flowers to like really really open and not last as long especially that like the bridal bouquet and bridesmaids and the buttonholes are going to be out of water all day um yeah so they do need to be kept cool especially for weddings as well because i do start those like three days in advance if it's a big one otherwise i'm just not going to have the time i would like to do it two days in advance but i mainly work on my own uh, i do have two employees but they're part-time as well so i do the majority of the florist uh floristry. um so yeah i do if it's a big wedding three days in advance and medium to small two days in advance just to make sure you've got all the flowers um so i hope i've got all that, all that covered for you <laughs> and here she is outside nice lighting nice placement Thank you so much for watching guys i hope this video was super duper helpful if it was i would really appreciate a subscribe a like or a comment if you can be bothered and we'll see you in the next one <laughs>